you're just basically a hardened criminal at this Pretty point. Pretty much. This is a video that we've never done before. Hopefully, we'll never have to do it again either. <laughs> kind of weird what has happened. All right, so we've got a lot of questions of what happened to the yellow submarine. Where is it? What are we gonna do with it? So we're gonna tell you why you haven't heard about the yellow submarine lately. It's kind of in limbo a little bit lately. So the yellow submarine is still at Lake Havasu with Merlin. In storage. In storage. We're gonna take it back to Bobby and Brian, don't you worry. But right after we aired our episodes of the yellow submarine, we got a visitor in the shop, right? We sure did. It was a fish and game officer from the state of Utah. How are you? I'm doing all right, how are you? We're not too bad. I'm with the Division of Wildlife, you're Paul, right? I am Paul. Awesome. Yep. Um, are you like super busy or can I borrow you for a oh, couple minutes? No, go ahead. I just gotta ask you a couple of quick questions. Yep. Oh. I've been watching your videos all week, so. so Is I that guess, good or bad? Uh, depends on who you are. Okay. He showed up and said that uh, he was investigating us for illegally transporting quagga mussels. And you recovered a boat that obviously had quagga mussels all for sure. over it. Yep. Were any of them alive? I'm no. just gonna get, okay. No. I, I, I watch, the video shows you spraying them off steam out here in your yard. It. Yeah, with the We start. steam cleaned it in half Sioux and then wet sanded the entire boat. Okay. And now they are all dead. Okay. Plus they froze. Yeah. yeah. We've been dealing with that. We tried to do this whole thing the right way. We got, it took us three extra months trying to get all the permissions we could get to go get this thing. And then never in a million years did we ever think we were gonna get in trouble for what we got in trouble for. Yeah, quagga mussels. Who would have thought? Yeah. He comes in and says, well, since you aired your video, my phone's been blown up. Well, ringing off the hook. It's, oh, yeah. yeah it, I'm sure I'm so sure. many people called him. The reason I'm here is your videos hit and my phone started ringing off the hook. The reason my phone was one, everybody's like, well, he had quagga muscles attached to his boat. <laughs> Two, they were alive. And I'm like, mm, yeah. no, they weren't. But I understand it. Quagga muscles are an invasive species. They don't want them to spread but we're well aware of them. We go to the lake all the time. Lake Havasu has them, Lake Mead has them, Lake Powell has them. They don't want them to spread to the other little streams and lakes. So we get which it. Which I understand, but we also know how to deal with them. We know their regulations, 30 days in the winter, seven days in the summer. This boat had been dry for way more than 30 days. So we never even thought about it. We yep. love all good law enforcement. Like they're awesome people. We need and them. And we need them. Yep. This country needs them. I mean, if something was to go awry, what do you guys do? You call Sorry. the cops. First time you have any trouble, you call 911. Yeah. That's it. My brother was a police officer for, I Forever. Know, for a long time. He's retired now. Such great people. And without them- There's chaos. There's complete chaos. So yeah. we totally back the blue. Occasionally, there are those that have a badge, that have the badge primarily to bully people and to have power. Unfortunately, DWR officer um, that came to the shop, I feel is like that kind of, I don't know. He's got a pretty good reputation in the Southern end of Utah as being a guy that's hard to deal with. We need DWR officers that like regulate people that poach deer and stuff. We, we do need that stuff. We just need them to have common sense and use their head instead of the power that they have. That's it. Yep. The one bad one gives a whole, the rest of them a bad name. And this guy, he has done that very thing. Through the, the five, six counties in Southern Utah, you say his name, everybody knows who he is. And you know, we don't need to say his name. We don't need to show his face. Nope. You can find out for yourself. <laughs> when you come into a YouTube shop, you're getting filmed. The chances are the camera's rolling at some point and we happened to have the camera rolling the whole time. The whole time. So he tried to trick me a couple of times, telling to say that the boat was in the water when we got it. So when did you pull the boat out of the water, off the lake? We didn't pull it off the lake. Did any, at any point when you're taking that boat off the water, did you think about the fact that you had muscles attached to it and you shouldn't be no, taking it off? dead. Okay. And I was quick to tell him that it never was in the water, that it was on dry land. So to give you a little bit of history, in 2019, in Paiute County, there was a deer that got hit and she was pregnant. And the fawn ended up surviving 
and some of the townspeople kind of took it under its wing and of course it you know it was kind of the town mascot i guess from what i understand and it was just a nice little deer and it just roamed around the neighborhood never caused any problem well i guess he got wind of it and he decided to use his authority and he went on to the people's property and shot the deer just reckless Reckless. That's how Cole Montague feels about the DWR conservation officer who fired a weapon near his Anemone home. DWR is out there to protect wildlife and he comes on the property and shoots a deer in the face. The doe named Sadie survives with a mark between the eyes. She spent time on the property since she was an orphaned fawn. Montague says practically raised by his dogs, which is why the accusations that she killed one don't make sense to him as well as what he says the officer did next. My sister and, and wife ran over to him and told him again, get off our property, you're on private property right now, get off. Walking around with a deer rifle trying to, trying to scare up the deer so he could kill her. After failing to kill Sadie with the first shot, Montague says the officer went around to the back of the property looking for a better shot. The point of the story is the DWR crossing the line, trespassing, firing a, right, or a gun on our property, he had no permission, he had no search warrant. Montague argues it should have never happened. If this guy was following policy and procedure, that's not right. They've got to change some stuff. Meanwhile, tonight I'm told that the incident is being investigated internally by the DWR. So I guess he got into some hot water over that situation and he was put in a different position, I guess, in the DWR office. So now, where, where we get to deal with now him for we Quagga get muscle. to deal with him because he's the quag. What did he call himself? I'm the sergeant of the division of wildlife over quagga muscle. Okay, he's the quagga muscle specialist. But he had sole authority. He's seen the videos. He told us he watched the videos. He could see they were dead. He stated that he thought they were all dead. They were alive. And I'm like, mm, yeah, no, they weren't. So, but he still decided that he needed to press the issue. So this was back in December. In March, we received a letter in the mail. Let me read that to you. Okay. It says, State of Utah plaintiff versus Paul Cox. That's me. So apparently I'm not the felon, Paul's the felon. No, I'm, I'm not the, even in this letter. I'm the criminal. So anyways, it says the state of Utah through the undersigned prosecutor alleges Paul Cox committed the following criminal offenses in Kane County, Utah. Count one, invasive species inspection station or administrative checkpoint violation, an infraction in violation of 2327201 1C in that Paul Cox on or about December 17th, 2022, did transport a conveyance or equipment that had been in infested water within the previous 30 days without decontaminating the conveyance or equipment. Which was not true, it hadn't not been true. in the water. No. So, and we have evidence of that from other videos that it had been out of the water for at least, what did we decide? Like a year? I, I it was, it was about sure. a year yeah. that we have like evidence that it was out of the water. Mind you, the lake is going up right now and where the boat was is like full of water. It's, it's uh, so 17 awesome. feet deep currently. Love it. The pin. So. Yes. There was no quagga mussels left in that boat. It was completely gutted before it ever got back on the water. So. We did our due diligence, things were done. He said the main problem was that I transported them across state lines. Where I had to drive, where I picked the boat up and drove around, we'll have a little map for you. Where I drove around, I had to cross the exact same state line to get it inspected at their station that I did to have to go to Merlin's in Havasu. So either way, I was crossing the state line with it, no matter the intention of what I was doing, cross the state, the same exact state line to do whatever, so. It was just contradictory what he was saying. So anyways, that is what we are currently dealing with right now is um, we got this. I called the courthouse because that is all the information that it has. It has no court appearance. It has like not how much, like if we owe a, a fee, like nothing. And so I called them up and they explained to me that we could either pay this citation fee. It wasn't that much to be honest. Or, but, but we didn't do anything wrong. Why we didn't pay do anything money? Wrong. We didn't do anything wrong. No. So me and Paul talked about it, and what did we decide? We decided, you know what? Let's go to court. Let's go see if uh, other people think we did something wrong. Because I feel like 
I followed all of their rules. So we decided that, you know what? Let's fight it. We're gonna pay a whole lot more in attorney fees than just paying this fee because this is ridiculous because we were just trying to do something nice. We did everything by the book and yet we never one time, did you ever think that you'd get in trouble for dead quagga mussels? No, no, I didn't think I would get in trouble for the dead quagga mussel. But if we can take this and win, then maybe the officer will think about it next time before he just writes pointless stuff out. Completely people. pointless. They We're just, not the only people this guy's picked on. No. He's got a reputation in Southern Utah. And that's I've got why. numerous friends that have had run-ins with him over different things where he had the jurisdiction to be like, you know what? It's not a big deal. It can just move on. But he didn't. They all went to court. It, it costs the taxpayers tons of money for frivolous crap like this. And he's in the position where he can either, you know, because that's his job. His job, technically, mm -hmm. is to do what he's doing when people are doing things wrong, you know? Like, yes, you are supposed to find those people that are poaching or that, you know, aren't doing things the correct way that you're supposed to. I believe his job was to come here and check the situation out. But when he got the facts, it should have been over with. Should have been done. But... Nope, we have to pursue this now. Anyways, we're, we're fighting this now. We're in it, we're in the thick of it. Yep. We called our attorney and he, that sounds official. We don't usually <laughs> we we have don't. attorneys. We do so now. we found a good attorney, a lawyer. What's the difference between an attorney or a lawyer? No idea. I don't know, we don't know anything. First time stuff. I ever needed one. Yeah, hopefully the last. Showed him all the evidence, showed him our video, showed him what was going on. Do you think we have the case? And he's like, oh yeah, fight this. <laughs> So that's what we're currently doing. We'll figure this all out, and then we'll show you guys the boat ripping on the lake again, and take it back to the people that it belongs to. To Georgia. To to I'm actually quite excited to it's take that fun. little trip. That trip's gonna be a good time. That we're trip planning on fun. meeting up with a few YouTubers on the way back there. Right, So that you're gonna love, that you've yep. been asking about. So we're super excited about that. But in the meantime, I mean, we just, you're just basically a hardened criminal at this Pretty point. Pretty much. So, book me, Dano. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. Anyway, so that's what we have for you today on today's video. Like I said, kind of a weird video. We don't make a lot of these. We hope we don't have to make a lot of these videos. Yeah. But but here we are here we making are. it because we're hardened criminals. <laughs> you are. Oh, yeah, My name me. is not on this. I know Merlin didn't even get on. Merlin there didn't even. How did you just get on this? I don't know. I don't either. Yeah, we'll keep you updated on it. I hope it goes nowhere. I hope a judge sees it, throws this thing out, and we carry on with life and we go get the yellow submarine and get it back to Georgia. Yep. But it's been stalled for a few months now because of this little chunk of paper that we have, so. So we wanna hear from you guys. What do you guys think of this whole situation? Yeah. <laughs> like, let us know in the comments what you think about this. I just feel like there's better use of our tax dollars than this. Yes, I agree. Before we let you guys go, we just wanted to let you know how much we love you and we're so thankful. We have the best viewers in By the far. world. Like, you guys are such, such a loyal fan base. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Thank you guys so much for being awesome and thanks for watching.